Okay, um, I just wanted to make an extra video, and I mentioned this at the end of my last video, to go through a couple of the problems on sapling, because I, I expect y'all to have uh, some issues with some of these, because you haven't done them before. So we'll do a couple of these problems together, probably three or four of them, and uh, hopefully that helps you out a little bit. So number one, I think you can all get number one. It's a multiple choice uh, question um, that doesn't involve any math. So let's go to number two, and two is where you start to get into some math. And the, the one thing I want you to always think of when you get to these problems is, um, what are they asking me? What do they want from me in this question? Um, and what do they give me? So the question says, a chemist requires 5.11 moles of Li2CO3 for a reaction. Um, so what do they give me? Right at the beginning, they give me moles. 5.11 moles of this chemical for a reaction. That's how much the chemist requires. Um, they want to know how many formula units, and formula units is essentially like a molecule. It's, it's a, a particle, it's a molecule, it has all of these atoms in it, two lithium, uh, one carbon, and three oxygens, all put together, that's one molecule, which is also called a formula unit. So they want to know how many formula units or molecules does this amount of moles contain? 5.11 moles, how many molecules or formula units are in there? So that's what they want me to do. Now, I'm going to come over here to the board, and we're going to do the math on this. So I have at the top of the board, and I wish that this was in a better spot so you could see it. Let me, let me actually pause this and see if I can get this clear. Okay, that's better. Um, so they want us to tell them how many particles they have. Um, particles is a generic term. You can call these atoms. You can call them uh, electrons, protons, neutrons, molecules, uh, or even formula units like they asked for. So when they say formula units, they mean a molecule. For one formula, what is the unit there? It's a molecule. So what they're talking about are particles. Um, they give me moles, and they want to go to particles. There's really only two or three choices. You have moles, you have particles, which can be atoms, formula units, uh, protons, neutrons, electrons, whatever you're talking about there. Um, or you can also have grams. Um, so on the left here, moles to particles. If I am given moles or given particles and they want me to go to the other one, this is the number that I'm going to use, Avogadro's number. Um, on the right here in blue, if they give me moles or give me grams and ask me to go to the other one here from moles to grams or grams to moles, I'm going to use the molar mass, and I can get the molar mass on the periodic table. So we're going to do a couple of each of these um, just to show you. Now, the problem they give me, they told me that I have 5.11 moles of Li2CO3. So I'm going to do this in red because this is where we're using the Avogadro's number. So 5.11 moles of Li2CO3. Um, for this problem, you're not really going to need to know what chemical this is. Um, I'm going to go ahead and write it down because that's the chemical we're using, but this is not really going to come into play. It could be 5.11 moles of anything. Now, what I need to turn this into is particles. I need to go to formula units. So the thing that I'm going to use to go from moles to particles, from moles to particles, is this equation right here. One mole is equal to 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd power particles, or Avogadro's number. Um, one mole is equal to that many. So if I have five moles, you can kind of see the math that's going to go on here. I need to use Avogadro's number to set up a conversion factor. So I'm going to take moles and put moles on the bottom because I have moles on the top here. I want it to cancel out. I'm going to have moles on the bottom, Li2CO3. So moles of Li2CO3, and if I have moles on one side, on the other side has to be particles. And that's what I actually want to get into. And so I'm going to have particles on the top, or formula units if you want to call that, and it's Li2CO3. Now what numbers go here? The numbers I already have written up here. One mole. And 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd particles. So one mole, 6.022, that should be a two. 6.022 
times 10 to the 23rd. Um, now, what's the math that I need to do here? If I divide by 1, does that matter? No. Um, so I'm going to start with my number on the left, 5.11, and then I'm going to multiply by my next number because it's on the top of this fraction. If it were on the bottom, I would divide, but on this one, it's on the top. Um, so I'm going to multiply by 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. So I take 5.11 times. For this, I'm going to open a bracket just to be extra safe. Open bracket 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd power, close the bracket, hit enter. And so my answer here, what I have is 3.077 times 10 to the 24th power. Um, you've got to make sure you use that times 10 to the 24 at the end there. I think you can see it, yeah. So that times 10 to the 24 at the very end of the number I have to use. I don't have to put every single decimal in here. I would just round it to... 3.077 times 10 to the 24th, 3.077 times 10 to the 24th, and I would put that in as my answer. Now, if they give you a different starting number, you're going to have a different answer at the end. Um, the problem's going to be set up the same. Whatever starting number they gave you here, you plug that in, multiply by 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd, and you should get your answer out. Um, and so if I put that in the answer box, that should be the correct answer. Um, note, they did tell me to round to three significant figures. That has four. Um, so I need to round this just a little bit. Let me go ahead and round this. Uh, a seven will round up to an eight. So let's call this 3.08 times 10 to the 24th power. That should be the correct answer. Um, I don't know if they'll count you wrong for the 3.077, but that's it. So that is problem number two. That's how we do problem number two. So I would just go ahead and type that in my answer box right here, and that should be the correct answer. Let's see if we can find a, another problem that's asking for something different. Um, so number... Four. Number four wants to know how many grams of carbon disulfide are there in 0.679 moles of the compound. So in this one, instead of going from moles to particles or particles to moles, we're going from moles to grams. So they give me moles and they ask me for grams. So when I come back over here to the board, what I'm looking to use is this moles to grams part. Um, I need to use the molar mass for that chemical, and I need to figure out how many grams it weighs. So I'm going to start off, as always, with my starting number. I'm going to use blue because I'm using the blue box over here. So my starting number is 0.679 moles. 0.679 moles of carbon disulfide. So... C S2. So it's 0.679 moles of carbon disulfide right here. I'm going to divide by one. And now, what do I need to do with this? I have one mole is equal to the molar mass in grams of that particular chemical or that particular element. Where do I get the molar mass? How do I know what that is? I get it from the periodic table. So the periodic table will tell me what the molar mass is. So I need to look up this chemical on the periodic table and add it up. And if you look and find one carbon and two sulfurs, we can add that up over here. Carbon is equal to 12.011 and sulfur is equal to 32.06. I have two sulfurs, so I'm going to add two of those. 32.06. Add all these together and what do I get? I get Point one three one, and I get six, and I get seven. So I think that's right. Seventy six point one three one should be pretty close to what we should have. So for each one mole of that chemical, CS two, for one mole. It should weigh 76.131 grams. 
That's a G, a bad G, but it's a G. 76.131 grams. So I'm going to make my conversion factor. Now, I want to get rid of moles. So if moles is on top, I want to put moles on the bottom to get rid of it. Moles of CS2. And how much does one mole of CS2 weigh? It weighs 76.131 grams. So 76.131 grams of CS2. Oh, C. S2. Now, let me erase this just real quick to give myself some more room. Now, before we do this, let's think about this. If one mole of CS2 weighs 76.131 grams, how much is 0.679 moles going to weigh? Is this less than one? Yes, it's less than one. So it should weigh less than 76.131. Um, that just makes sense. If one mole is equal to 76.131, Less than a mole is going to be equal to less than 76.131. So I'm going to do this in the calculator again. This is on top, so I'm going to multiply by it. I'm going to start on the left with my number, multiply by 76.131, and that should be it. You can divide by 1 if you want, but it's not going to change your answer. So 0.679 times 76.131, and my answer that I got is... 51.69, 51.69 grams of CS2. And so you see it's less than 76, which is what I expected it to be. Um, it's, it's almost there, but it's not quite there. Uh, so 0.679 moles of CS2 weighs 51.69 grams. I got that information from the periodic table. So I use the periodic table and I set up my conversion factor and that gets me to the correct answer. Now, let's see if we can do one or two more. Um, let's see. So they're asking for grams from moles again. Convert the number of atoms to moles. So this is back to the red problem. And we'll go ahead and do this. You can, you can see them go back and forth. Um, so number six, they asked me to convert a certain number of atoms to a certain number of moles of carbon. And so for that, when I come back over here, again, I'm going to use the moles and particles one because atoms are particles. Um, so if I want to go from particles to moles, I need to use Avogadro's number. So let me erase the last problem and we can do this one. This one will not be too difficult. So what's the number they gave me in the problem? Convert 4.33 times 10 to the 24 atoms. So my problem says 4.33 times 10 to the 24th atoms of carbon. And in order to convert, I need to use what? Avogadro's number. Um, if I have atoms on top, atoms is a type of particle, I want atoms on bottom. So I need to cancel out atoms, and I need to get into what? I need to get into moles. Moles is what I want to get into. So if I get rid of atoms, I put it on the bottom, atoms of carbon. And what do I want on top? Moles of carbon. And what are the numbers that I put here? I get them from this e equivalency right here, this equation. One mole is equal to 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms or particles. So if I have one mole... I have 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. And now that's my problem. That's the whole thing. I have it set up. All I have to do is the math. Start with this number. Put it in the calculator. Use your brackets. So 4.33 times 10 to the 24th power divided by, because it's on bottom, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd power. You put that in the calculator, and you should get an answer that's a Relatively small number compared to those two. So let's see. Um, open bracket, 4.33 times 10 to the 24th. Close bracket, divide by, open bracket, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. Close bracket, hit enter. And what I got was 7.19 moles. 7.19 moles of carbon. Now, that's a reasonable answer for moles. Um, usually on moles, you don't want a huge, huge number 
Um, they usually try to give you a regular type of number for moles. Um, here is where your brackets really come into play. If you're dividing numbers in scientific notation, I would always use the brackets when you put it into the calculator um, because the brackets are going to tell it to do the math in the right order. Um, look at all the math you're doing if you just pop this in the calculator. You're multiplying. You have exponents. You're dividing by the number on bottom and then multiplying again, and you have more exponents. If it does this in the wrong order, you will get a different number. Um, your number will be wrong. You will either have an exponent where you shouldn't have an exponent or your actual number itself will be wrong. So make sure you use those brackets. Um, but that would be the correct answer for this question. How many moles? So they want to know, you want to convert to moles. How many moles are there in 4.33 times 10 to the 34 or 24 atoms of carbon? Um, there are 7.19 moles. If you have a different problem with a different number, obviously you're going to have a different answer. So um, just keep an eye out on that. Now we should be able to find one more type of problem. They want to know... <clears throat> Ions from moles, that's what we did kind of at the beginning. How many atoms are there in 41 grams? That's kind of a long one. We can do that one. Let's do number 15. Um, so this time they want us to go from atoms. No, they, they give us grams. So they want us to go from grams of this carbon disulfide uh, to atoms of carbon disulfide. So how many atoms are there in that? Um, and this one's a little tricky. You actually have a couple steps. So let's go over here and do this one. And we will call this quits for this video. I know these are long videos, but um, it requires a little bit of explanation and it ain't easy. So first thing we need to do, we need to add up our molecular weight or our molar mass for carbon disulfide. Um, so I'm gonna start that over here. Uh, carbon was 12.011, um, and then I had two sulfurs. The sulfurs were 32.06, yes. 32.06, 32.06, I had two of them. Add those together, and I got what, 70, 76.131, I believe. Yes, 76.131. Um, that is the weight in grams for CS2, for one mole of CS2. So what do I need to do? They give me... 49.1 grams of CS2. So let's start over here on the left. I think everybody can see that over here. 49.1. Uh, yeah, you can see it. 49.1 grams of CS2, carbon disulfide. So the first thing I need to do is get this out of grams, and I need to get it into moles. So to go from grams to moles, I'm going to use the molar mass over here. Um, and I've already calculated it. It's 76.131 grams per moles. If I have grams on the top, on my next conversion factor, I'm going to want grams of CS2 on the bottom. It's bad handwriting, but grams of CS2 needs to be on the bottom. If I'm using this conversion factor, what goes on the other side of grams is moles. Um, so I need moles on top. So... How many moles is for one or for 76.131 grams? One mole is equal to 76.131 grams. So I have one mole of CS2 and 76.131 grams of CS2. Now, the next step, I'm going to convert over here. I'm already in moles, so I have moles here. I need to go to particles. So I'm going to make another conversion factor. And this time, I go from moles to particles. If I want to get rid of moles, moles here, I need to put it on bottom. So whatever's on top, if you want to get rid of it, you need to put it on bottom. So I have moles of CS2 on bottom. 
How many particles go in a mole? Avogadro's number. So 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd power. And this is, uh, let's call it particles or molecules. We'll, we'll call it molecules. Molecules of CS2. Um, so how many moles is that equal to? One mole of CS2. And now we're going to have one extra step here. And they got a little tricky with us, um, but I spotted it right away because I'm used to this now. Uh, but they didn't ask us for molecules of CS2. What did they ask us for? They asked us for atoms. They asked us for atoms of CS2. And so if I was just looking at that whole thing as a molecule, that would just be one molecule. But how many atoms, individual atoms, are there in that molecule of CS2? Well, there's three atoms. Um, I have one carbon and two sulfurs. So that should be three atoms of CS2 in that one molecule. So I'm going to have one last step at the end here. Um, once I figure out the number of molecules, I can add an extra conversion factor and say one molecule of CS2 is equal to three atoms, CS2, because um, I have one carbon and two sulfurs. So now this is my problem set up. It's a long one, um, but if you break it into different steps, it's not too bad. Start on the left, move to the right. If the number's on bottom, you divide by it. If the number's on top, you multiply by it. And so let's see what we have here. I'm going to have open bracket, 49.1 grams. And then I'm going to divide by, I'm going to divide by the mass, the molar mass for CS2. So divide by 76.131 grams. Close the bracket. Next step. This is on top, so I need to multiply. So I divided because this is on bottom here. I'm going to multiply because this is on top here. So close brackets, multiply, open brackets, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd power. Close my bracket. And then my numbers on top here, my three, I can divide by one if I want to, but I don't need to. It's not going to change my number. So I just need to multiply by this three. Um, so at the end, I'm going to times three, and I hit enter, and the answer I got for this is 1.165 equals to 1.165 times 10 to the 24th power, and this is atoms, individual atoms in CS2. Not of CS2, because they're different atoms, but individual atoms in CS2. Um, and just to see if I did that right, let's let's see if they give me credit for this. Uh, 1.165 times 10 to the 24th. One point one six five times 10 to the 24th power. Check answer. And I got it right. So uh, not too bad. This is difficult work. Um, don't feel bad if you're struggling with this. If you have questions, let me know. Uh, send me a screenshot of your problem. But hopefully this helps you out a little bit more uh, in trying to get some of these problems done. So um, everybody have a nice day. We will probably work on this tomorrow because um, I highly doubt that everybody's going to get finished. Um, these problems take quite a while. Um, but do practice writing this stuff down, uh, get a piece of scratch paper, write it down like I do in the videos, uh, maybe watch a different video from Khan Academy, or if you have any questions, let me know. Um, but the more you write this down, the easier it will become. If you're just trying to do this in your calculator without writing anything down, it's going to be very difficult. So I hope this helped you out a little bit and showed you some of the different types of problems that they have. Um, and maybe you can kind of start to organize this in your brain. Um, so Thanks for watching, and uh, if you have any questions, shoot me an email, and I will get back to you. Uh, everybody have a nice day.